Okay, so now we have imported our data and we are ready to do motion correction. And for those of you who uh, are just getting started, motion correction uh, is kind of, I, I can explain it through this video here. Uh, so as we shoot our particles with electrons, they, they move and the, the ice in the micrographs actually swells. And what that can do is limit resolution, which I'll show here in a second. So this is kind of showing the, the effect of different detectors on uh, overall resolution. But uh, you can see the vibrating image that wasn't motion corrected came out to be blurrier than the motion corrected image. And you can see the, the effect of that on the resolution of these two particles. So what you're doing when you uh, motion correct uh, at least initially, is you're determining the, the number of tiles you want to break your e images into. So here we have a one by one tile in which this entire picture of a, a duck would be motion corrected as one large tile. And then this would be a three by three uh, motion corrected image where each one of these individual tiles would be uh, traced individually. Um, and eventually, once you're really uh, trying to optimize your data set, you'll track the motion of individual particles. But that's not until you've actually picked all of the particles. So let's go back to rely on. Uh, this is our data set. Um, we've imported it. So what you'll do is go to Browse and go to uh, Import uh, Folder. You have your labeled data set and a star file with all of your movies. So the next thing you have to do is input all of the parameters that were used to collect the micrographs. And that will be given to you by whoever collects the data. So uh, it's important to get the pixel size right and the voltage. And all of these values for the test data set come from the rely on tutorial that I showed you earlier. Uh, and these are the parameters for that data set. What I was mentioning in the uh, duck image example, uh, th this is the number of patches or number of tiles you want to break your image into. The higher number of patches uh, r requires more computing power and slows down the speed in which you can process the data. Um, but it also increases the resolution of your, uh, your, your final result. So it, it would be five by five as a common uh, number to use or common parameters. One by one is doable if you're just trying to get a quick look at the data. The next thing you have to do uh, is you'll have to upload a gain reference image. And that's kind of a, uh, a blank that's taken by the camera uh, in the dark. And you can find that. Uh, and it's always included in your data set. For us, it's in the movies folder. And it has this MRC extension shown here. Uh, and then those will have a certain gain rotation and gain flip. And that information will be given to you by whoever collects the data. The next thing you need to do is determine the number of MPI processes and, and threads you want to use for this data. And it's usually good to know the number of CPUs that your machine has. In our case, we have uh, 16 that we allocated before. In the previous video, uh, times four nodes. So we have a total of 64 processes. And it's usually good to use just a little bit less than your total computing power. So we have the number of MPI processes and the number of threads per process. So this would give us 32 processes. We'll actually increase that to uh, 12, and that will give us 48. And that's usually a pretty, pretty good number. So we're just going to call this motion core one, and we will run that. And that's how you uh, motion correct your data.